Why on earth am I in an underground car park in Frankfurt, you might well ask? Well, this is where it all began for our first story on Eurobike 2024. Yes, on a Saturday morning after a particularly late night here in Frankfurt, is where I was introduced to the first prototype DJI e-bike 12 months ago. I mean, this is arguably the biggest news of the show, of the year, and maybe ever, for many reasons. I mean, let's think about it. This is a company who are not traditionally known for making mountain bikes, let alone e-mountain bikes. But then again, they are no strangers to electronics. I mean, they are the number one in the world when it comes to drones and aerial photography and cinematography. They're involved in uh, agriculture, in the fire and rescue services. I mean, they know how to put a brushless motor get together. They actually make a cargo drone, which is capable, think about it, of carrying two of these Amflow bikes. Now, there's two things on play here. We've got Amflow, which is a company which is incubated by DJI. I mean, DJI, on, on many of our adventures throughout the world, we've used DJI drones, we've used DJI gimbals to film those close-up shots and those big scenic shots which we see, which are so kind of inspirational for the sport of e-mountain biking. So, folks, let me introduce you to the Amflow DJI e-bike. This is very much a bombshell, um, apart from it being DJI. I want to talk about the details of the motor and the battery. But first of all, what about the bike itself? Well, it's 150 mil travel rear, 160 mil up front, 2929 or 2927.5. It comes shipped with a flip chip, which enables you to swap between the different wheel sizes. Um, talking of sizes, uh, four sizes, medium large, extra large and XXL. The frame itself is full carbon. Now there's two different versions. There's the PL Carbon and then there's the PL Carbon Pro. What you might be interested in is the weights. Now the PL Carbon Pro weighs in at 19.2 kilograms. Well, that sounds fine, right? Because there's lots of lightweight e-mountain bikes around that weight. However, this motor is 105 newton meters. In boost mode, it's 120 newton meters with 1,000 watt peak power. So that kind of changes the game, right? Uh, the batteries, which we'll look at in detail in a minute, we've got either a 600, which is the, with the, um, the PL Pro, and also an 800 watt hour version, and they're super compact batteries. Okay, folks, let's take two minutes to go through the key parts of DJI's e-bike system here. We've got the remote to display, the beautiful motor and two batteries. Now in terms of the remotes, I rode an early version of this bike which was uh, cable operated, it's now wireless and you've got a left hand and a right hand remote. The right hand or whichever way you choose to run it can operate the display whereas the left hand one controls your modes plus your walk mode. Obviously I think having remotes like this is pretty special and quite unique in the e-mountain bike world. Now in terms of the remote, uh, it's arguably the best one out there. I mean, it's touchscreen, you've got the key metrics. But let's talk about the heart of the matter, shall we? We've got the DJI motor. I mean, this comes a massive surprise to all of us coming into the market. You know, a company who's, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you could they could probably make that e-mountain bike ride by itself. Um, there's five modes. We've got Eco Trail turbo there's an automatic mode and a boost mode now in terms of the power we've got 105 newton meters but you've also got that boost mode which gives you 120 newton meters um, peak power 800 in the lower modes and a peak power of over a thousand watts in boost i mean that's for 30 seconds but nevertheless the ability to climb super technical terrain with that amount of power is absolutely phenomenal. But guys, I mean, just take a look here at the compactness of this motor. Right, batteries then, guys. Now, there's two battery levels available for the bike. We've got a 600 watt hour and also an 800 watt hour. But I think the power density on these and the size of those batteries is pretty special. So there you go, folks. There's the main component parts of the bike. This is a masterclass in displays. Top left, we've got the mode. Top right, what gear you're in. Bottom left, time of the day. And then, of course, bottom right there is the battery percentage. Now, you can either do this touchscreen or by the remote on the top right handlebar. Then we go into power, torque, I love the torque one, cadence, and then cycling distance, duration, 
range before the third screen shows you the gradient, elevation and again the gear. Oh, hold on, there's a fourth one too. Heart rate, average heart rate and max heart rate. Now, not only that, I mentioned you can do uh, the touch screen, which goes left and right, and you can flip it up where you connect to the app. Pretty much a whole world of customization. Okay, folks, really key part of this ride is how this motor sounds. Now, it's the 10th uh, iteration of the motor. They've really worked on it. It's a lot smoother and it's a lot quieter than the first one. Okay, folks, here's the front of house. You can see the left hand controller on the right hand. In terms of the modes, We've got Eco, Trail, Turbo, and <laughs> Crazy Fast Turbo. So there you go, folks. Uh, a quick insight into the Amflow DJI bike. Um, it's light, it's powerful, it's long range, it's well made, it's got great geometry. Um, one thing I didn't tell you is I've actually been riding a prototype version of this bike for the past 12 months. Um, I think this is, like I said, a bombshell. It's, it's major, major news in the e-mountain bike world. It, it raises one question, and that is the fact that if you've got a bike which is all those things, it's light, it's powerful, it's long range, then the kind of whole business of light to mid-assist e-mountain bikes is questioned a little bit more with the introduction of a bike like this. So uh, thanks so much to DJI, to Amflow. You know, they've been through seven or eight versions of this frame to get the right flex to stiffness balance. The version I rode was was very good. And uh, the fact that they've, they've just developed that motor, it is so quiet, it's so smooth. And I just cannot wait to get it in the mountains. Star Union from Hangzhou, two hours south of Shanghai in China. Uh, now, Zipan, who works for Star Union, promised me 12 months ago that there would be something new in the pipeline. And he has duly delivered with the MGM motor. Now, the unique thing about the new MGM motor is it's actually it's a magnetic gear which replaces, say, a planetary drive or a harmonic drive. You might have seen a similar shape motor as this in the TQ HPR, but this bike, this motor is actually quite a lot more powerful. This is putting out 580 watts peak. That's quite a bit more than uh, many of the contemporaries. Uh, 2.3 kilos, 75 newton meters, but Zipan tells me that yes, it can put out 75 newton meters as stock, but that's quite a conservative figure. They say they can actually push this motor to about 85 to 90 newton meters. So when you look at the future of e-mountain bikes and a system as neat as this, it's super exciting, right? Now, the bike we have in question is actually a sample bike which MGM are using. This is a Lighten, which means light weapon. It looks around about 160 mil travel with that coil shock on there. But I'm going to talk about a few more things about the motor, though. The first thing is that it's said to be 90% efficient. So when you compare that to many other motors in the market which are around about 80 to 85 percent efficient plus the fact that it's low friction it gives you a low noise there's almost zero noise with this with this system that's in turn going to have an effect on how much battery you use so this bike has actually got a 480 watt hour battery but with a with a motor which is 90 percent efficient it's going to give you more range so to point out actually star union don't just do um the whole e-bike system which i'll talk about in a minute they also do brakes as well sure Star Union high-end racing. So that's a full CNC part. And uh, Star Union do the remote, they do the top tube display, and as I mentioned, uh, a range of batteries for e-mountain bikes. This is cool. Uh, you know when you've got something legit in your hand. This is the new ZF Centrix uh, drive unit. ZF, the third biggest automotive player in the world behind Continental and Bosch. So they, they probably know what they're doing when it comes to making motors. This is their new motor, which is actually fitted to the new Raymond bike behind us, which we'll talk about in a minute. Right, what are the key features then? Right, 2.5 kilos. Um, Definitely no noise from this motor, and that's because it's an oil bath, lifetime oil bath on this motor. Uh, 90 newton meters, and that's a proper 90 newton meters. Uh, but inside this unit, we've got the usual stuff, such as the stator, the rotator, um, the PCB, PCB board, and the reduction gear. I mean, Kieran, what's special about this? 
It's just a, an absolutely incredible unit, Steve. It's it's so small, it's so powerful, and on top of that is the the tech that they've managed to cram inside. It's just mind blowing. You know, we've got things like a, a clutch inside to to cope. With oh right, so it is a bit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not just the the usual. Oh, this is fantastic. This is great. No, they, we've actually got some really incredible stuff in there. Um, like I say, there, there's a tor there's a there's a clutch in there. So basically, what that means is, opposed to having the the current to the motor that cuts out every time you you hit a lip as you're climbing, what it does is it activates the clutch so that then basically you can keep moving forward, uh, maintaining the the motor movement. Wow. So when it comes down to um, momentum, when you're tackling technical climbs, that would be a performance advantage, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do now. So we, you know, we've got the we've got the hardware in there. We've got the software that we're we're improving every day with uh, with Patrick, the head of head of software that we we spend a lot of time doing a lot of yeah, take him down in the jangly trails around Nice to to, to, to get a bit of uh, get a bit of extra extra tech in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we you know we've got some really quite cool features that we're we're working on for not just for here but for the SOP, so the the product launch uh, at the end of the year. Few of the key details. It's actually a strain wave gear motor. Can you explain quickly what strain wave gear is? It's kind of similar to the the TQ motor, right? It's pretty similar um, in the fact that we've got the so at the heart of the system you've got the electric motor, which is directly connected to the rider. So that's a, a fantastic benefit for, for the actual rider because what you don't have is you don't have the the sort of the, the the freewheel action to get all the gearing to engage in the system. So your electric motor has then got the is then connected to the gearing, which itself is connected to the chainring. So you know the the rider's input is absolutely instantaneous. So this is all actually made in Czech Republic then. Yes, it's all made in Czech Republic. Uh, the, the the parent company is based in Friedrich Schaffen, uh, the old Eurobike site. Um, but yeah, it's a really really interesting product. There are very few, if any, e-mountain bike brands which are simply e-bike and not mountain bike as well. One such brand is Moustache from the Vosges in northeast France, company set up by Greg and Manu back in 2012. So pretty much pioneers in the EMTB world. This is one of their new projects, the box project. It does, as you can see, feature the Pinion MGU uh, motor gearbox unit in the bike there. A few geometry numbers to get you guys going. 64 head tube angle, 450 chainstay length, which actually makes it a little more of a playful bike than the other one they have in the range, which I've forgotten the name of. Uh, 29, 27.5 wheels, a reach in size large of 475 mil, C tube angle of 78 degrees. Um, there is actually a new update from Pinion in terms of the shifting. Now there's a new full automatic shifting, so you can have manual, semi-automatic, or fully automatic shifting on this mountain bike. It is belt drive from Gates. Now, obviously I've ridden the MGU bike uh, a few times now, and I think one of the key things for me, the key takeaway, is the fact that when you're riding downhill, that sensation, the feeling of grip that you get on a bike with this setup is absolutely amazing. Um, Moustache folks, they, they're launching this bike next year, so keep an eye uh, Some from hot news from Northeast France. Do you know what, I'm beginning to think, what is the most significant story from Eurobike 2024? I think this Raymond Tarok is pretty close to the top of that list. 160 mil travel, I think, They've been so reactive to getting this bike on the market with that ZF-centric motor. Quickly remind you of the ZF motor, 90 Newton meters, 2.5 kilos. It's an oil bath system. It's got a clutch on it. A step which we need to take in e-mountain biking is one of reliability. I mean, ZF, they are number three in the automotive world, you know, 40 billion company. I've talked to the guys behind the system, uh, the component parts in there, it is super tight. There's no sound from the motor at all. So I think to have a bike such as this is very significant. Bike itself, like I said, 160 mil travel, 29 inch wheel up front, 27.5 on the rear. 160 is a great all round bike, 756 watt hour battery. It's got the full ZF system on there. So you've got the remote, you've got the touchscreen display on the, on the mount there. And uh, you know, fantastic range. And yeah, I think this bike is pretty special. Now I'm thinking you guys might like this. This is a beautiful piece of German precision and engineering. This is the Pinion MGU motor, exploded view. I mean, look at it. There are 200 or around about 200 parts in this system. Uh, it's all made in Germany. Some of the parts are hardened steel. There's a couple of coatings on there. For example, this 
This uh, gear here is it's got a coating of KVL on it, which I think is because it's subjected to some of the outside environment. I mean, look at it, what can I say? Magnesium casings here. We've got the gears, you've got, you've got four and three, which translates into 12. You've got the pods, which select the gears there. You've got the shifting shaft uh, down there in the middle. Um, this is the reduction gear. Now, just to give you an idea, that reduction gear is when it's closed up, connected to this cog here. Moving across, I mean, that's, the, that's obviously the gear part of the business. Then we're moving over here and we've got the stator, we've got the rotator, you've got the PCB board. And all together, folks, if you've not ever ridden a Pinion MG unit, unit give it a go. I mean, I'm not going to go into it now because there's so many benefits of having a system like that. And it's so cool to see that, like I said, fully designed and built in Germany. Oh, apart from one part there, which I think is made in Hungary, but full European bit of kit. What a day for e-mountain biking. Best ever? Hmm, I think it's pretty much up there. But it's not over yet, folks. Join us tomorrow for day two.